Hi everybody, welcome back to the Rick Quadruple Zero channel. As you can see, we got Chris's uh, 2015 Ram 1500 back in the driveway. And if you remember a little while back, uh, the last time this was in one of the videos, we installed what, Chris? Did the Bilstein 5100 series uh, lift struts in the front and a set of Bilstein shocks in the rear along with some upgraded tough truck springs in the rear. Yeah, so what we're gonna show you today is uh, I, I think you'd probably see behind me, Chris uh, upgraded his mobile living accommodations. So he, he picked up some uh, basically air bags. Air bags, air springs is what mm -hmm. they're called. This is made by Airlift Company. This is the Airlift 1000 HD model. Uh, they have a couple different varieties. I went with the 1000 HDs, up to 2100 pounds of load leveling capacity. This should help with towing the travel trailer to keep the truck level and keep it more stable when we were towing a large load like this travel trailer. Um, later on, we will be doing a weight distribution hitch installation to also further uh, make it safe and, and balance the weight on the truck and trailer so that we are not getting the rear end sag and squat that these trucks are known for because of their rear spring suspension. Yeah. So. Yeah, so without any further ado, we'll get into it. Now, I could already tell you, Chris, when I got down here, you had the rear wheels off, yep. you had the spare tire drop. You got it up on jack stands with the okay. suspension um, extended. So we'll give you a quick shot of all that and uh, you know, kind of show you this. This is not a supplement for the installation instructions of the airlift. Definitely read your book mm -hmm. that comes with your kit. This is just kind of a quick, this is what we're doing, this is how it kind of went, so you can kind of know what you're getting into if you choose to do this yourself. Kind of like our own experience with putting exactly. it in, so. All right, hope you guys enjoy it. Here we go. Okay, so I figured I'd clear this up before I get any questions. Um, in the last video Chris's truck was in, this was pretty much every other comment. So the tire size he is running is a 275-65 R20 which basically equates out to a 34 inch tire, Correct. give or take. So that's the tire size. That's what it looks like on the truck. No spacers, factory rims, no rubbing. No rubbing. There you go. Just thought I'd note that quick before uh, anyone asked. All right, back to the install. Okay, so you're looking at the driver's side rear of my 15 Ram. We've got the uh, rear tire obviously off, so you can see the brakes. We've got the wheel well liners out, and we've got the suspension completely extended. There's nothing, you know, the axle's pretty much just hanging in limbo right now. We've got it up on jack stands. And what we're gonna be doing is installing this air spring here. This is the spring from the kit. It's gonna go inside this coil spring, and then we're gonna route some air lines to a, a Schrader valve on the back of the truck for filling these uh, springs. Um, we are doing a manual fill setup. This is not going to have a compressor and I'm going to be tying these together so they'll be a T-fitting and they'll be inflated evenly from side to side since the load I'm carrying is going to be a travel trailer. It's not going to be unbalanced. Um, you can install them the other way but we're choosing to do a single path installation. So the next step will be getting this actual air spring into that coil spring um, and we'll kind of show you that process and how it goes. We took the bag and it says to compress it into like a hot dog bun shape. I put some zip ties on there just to make it easier for myself. So now we're gonna actually install it. The instructions say to try to get it in the bottom, most open area of the spring. As you can see, the spring is a little smaller, you know, cause this whole thing's expanded. So I'm gonna use this, seems to be the biggest opening I can get the top in, which has got the Schrader valve. So you wanna make sure your valve's at the top and just pretty much work this in guess like so and we'll see how this goes okay well, I want to put this in. I'm go get my cutters We're just going to put a little air into the bag to get it to go into that uh, pre-molded shape, as they call it. So 
I'm just taking my air chuck and That looks to be uh, what it should be. So we've pretty much got the airbag installed in the spring. Next step will be routing an airline to it, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. All right. So we've got our bags installed in the coil springs. We did this as uh, the passenger side. Now we did the driver's side. And now we're on to the passengers, and now we're going to show you the actual airline um, routing and installation part of the, the project. So the kit comes with these little clamps. Take a pair of pliers and you open them up. Slide them on the airline. And then uh, there's this fitting that goes on the top of the bag, and there's a barb, and we're going to put that together. Use a little soap just for lubrication. That is the key to a smooth penetration. You want to cover all the barbs with the airline. Which once you soap it up makes it a little tougher because now it's very slick. There we go. So we got that all covered. Move the clamp into position to hold it tight. And there we go. And we're just going to route that with this spacer thing they give you with the kit. So that just sits on top of the bag as a protector. And I'm routing the airline down through the top of the spring. And it just. Uh, crud out of there that might have gotten in. Just thread this on the top of the bag. And they'd say to just do this finger tight, no tools. And there we go. So that's pretty much the bag installed with the air hose run. Now we're going to route the line underneath the truck. So that's why we've dropped the spare tire so we've got easy access. We'll route that to the back. We'll put in the T-fitting. The Schrader valve and the installation will be complete. Then we'll soap test everything and make sure we got no leaks. So I'm going to just for my convenience push this through to the other side. And then I'll uh, get on the creeper and start the routing process. So I've got my airline. I got it pretty much trying to follow wiring harnesses and things I can zip tie to to keep it out of the way. So in this case, I got it zip tied up to this harness over the top of the spare tire holder and then we're gonna continue to follow the uh, looks like the license plate wiring over to here and you can see I've got my left side bag line already run we'll put in a t-fitting somewhere in this general vicinity above the license plate in this area where we can secure it with some zip ties and then our Schrader valve is going to be mounted to the license plate um, area on the back of the truck and we'll we'll show you that when we get out from underneath the rig here so basically I'm just they only give you four zip ties in the kit I'm using a a couple extra but I'm notoriously known for using way too many zip ties on most of my projects so but it's always better to be more secure so yeah figure can't hurt anything having a little extra security there um, the other key with cutting this airline they recommend you don't use a wire cutter, you use a razor blade or something of that nature so you get a, a nice clean edge. So I'm just using a regular old razor blade and you can see it makes a nice smooth edge when you have a sharp blade. So we're going to put our T-fitting up here and then this short piece of hose will go to our Schrader valve. So not a ton of extra line but we have extra. So. That's good news. And you can pick your own routing path, whatever you think is going to be best for your particular application. This just seems to me to be the best route. You'll notice my truck's got a, a lot of, looks like crud, like I'm getting on my hands. That's undercoating because we live in Buffalo and stuff is notoriously known for rotting. So in this case, we use, I get my truck undercoated. Uh, yearly so 
it's a little bit of a messy deal when you got to work on it, but the hope is in the long run, it'll last longer and I won't have the, uh, the bed rotting out like you see on some of the older trucks around here. This is a little bit tougher when your hands are slimy. So we've got our airline all run, assembled, T-fitting in place. Right now I got it hanging loosely. We got our Schrader valve mounted to the airline. The next step is we're gonna get out from underneath the truck. We're gonna drill a hole in this plastic bumper deal and we'll mount the Schrader valve, get that all in place. Then we'll put the, uh, the truck back down on its tires, you know, put it all back together and we'll uh, check it for leaks and see how the system works. So we're, uh, we're pretty close to completing the installation and when I'm done this will sit through this plastic piece uh, next to my license plate I'll have the Schrader valve for filling and you can see I've got the hose so there's enough slack that it, nothing's tight it won't interfere with the spare tire anything like that so uh, all in all not too bad of an installation it was pretty relatively simple yeah, I'd say this is pretty straightforward as far as uh, insulation goes. So yeah. yeah, you just need some basic hand tools, pliers, um, obviously the stuff to take your tires off, jack stands, that kind of stuff, but that's to be expected with this type of a... Uh... Okay, so here you could see the final product here of what we did to Chris's truck. See he has that valve mounted through the license plate holder. And I'll get a shot from the outside just so you could see what it looks like from the exterior. Okay, and there you can see that's where we're actually gonna fill it up, how we're gonna charge the system. So we've got the truck back down on its tires. Now for the video, I didn't put the spare tire back up or the wheel well liners in, because um, now we've got a load, we've got the bags aired up to 35 PSI, and I just hosed everything down with a leak detection fluid. So we're looking at our T-fitting here our uh, Schrader valve connection and then on top of our bags where we have all our basically anywhere there was an airline connection we're looking for bubbles for leakage um, so far so good no no bubbles are showing up as we say in the gas industry no bubbles no troubles so uh, I think we're good we're gonna wrap the rest of this up as far as putting everything back together and then we'll be on to the trailer hitch part which we mentioned earlier in the video so uh, stick around we'll be back okay uh, I don't know if you could tell on camera but it started drizzling so that's kind of a bummer but uh, the whole airbag systems installed they're sitting at about five pounds right now um, we're going to take some measurements and load uh, the hitch with the trailer weight uh, just a quick note Throughout the video, we were saying the maximum was about 35, but that's what you should be using for testing the system. The, the absolute maximum for the system, per the instructions, is 50 pounds. So in case anyone was wondering, that's that's the max. But typically, I think you said you're going to be running about... I think I'll run around 35 with the trailer weight. We're also going to be combining, again, in the, very shortly we're doing the weight distribution hitch, so that will hopefully take the majority of the weight load. Um, this section here is just going to be kind of showing the difference with the airbags only. Um, safety wise you're going to want a weight distribution hitch when you're towing this kind of weight. But this is just more for the airbags to see where how what kind of factor they play into the, the whole system here. So what we're going to do is drop the trailer onto the ball. Um, this is a 6,700 pound trailer dry as it sits currently. We're going to drop it on. With the bags unloaded you'll see the amount of squat that the truck gets. It almost basically bottoms it out. And then we'll raise the trailer up, we'll fill the bags to 35, and we'll put the trailer weight back down and see what our measurements look like and see how much of a difference it really made. Yeah. All right. All right. So the top of the bumper, we're about 29 and a quarter, would you say? Yeah. 29 and a quarter inches to the top edge of the front, or the rear bumper. Um, probably going to be out of the shot, but we'll, just for fun. So right now you can't see, but Chris is taking front measurements. 28 and three quarter. 28 and three quarter in the front, and 29 and a quarter in the rear. So now we're going to put this uh, weight down on 
the trail. Now remember, this is unloaded. Um, the bags are not, they just got their 5 PSI in, which is their recommended any time you're just running your truck. little foot is off the block of wood. So we have all the way to the trailer on the hitch right now. You probably can see the truck has got a pretty good amount of squat on it. And time for some numbers. So we're down to 26 and 3 quarter. Yeah. So we got a good amount of squat out of that. In the rear, About 29 and 3 quarter in the front. 29 3 quarter in the front. And 26, what we say 26? 26 and 3 quarter in the back. 26 3 quarter in the back. So what was that? Was that like 2 and a half in the back? We went from 29 and a quarter down to 26 and 3. Is that yeah, that's 3? Uh, Might be 2 and a half inches of full squat. So. We're going to raise the trailer back up because you want to fill the bags uh, without the load on it. So we're going to raise the trailer back up onto its uh, stand and then we'll put 35 PSI in the bags and we'll drop it down again and see where we're at. Five PSI in the bags. And here we go. Put the weight back down. Okay, foot's off the ground. Now it did squat a little, which is to be expected. This is a lot Definitely of Definitely squat. A lot of weight. But I'm not sure if it squatted as much as it did. We are about 27 and a half. So we gained about three quarters of an inch with yeah. just the bags alone. Yeah. I mean, I'd say that's worth That's to be expected, yeah. That's I mean, this worth is. It, I would this, say. this combined with the weight distribution hitch should make it more stable and add to, the, to a better towing experience for this truck. I mean, optimally, yeah, three quarter ton truck would probably be the better suited for this camper, but that's not in the budget right now. Um, this truck is rated to tow little right around 8,000 pounds as it sits um, so trying to just beef up I, I'm not gonna I know I'm not gonna increase the weight capabilities by the numbers but if I can make it safer which is ultimately the goal because I'm on the road with all of you folks um, we don't want to have this thing telling my truck where to go we want the truck to tell the camper where to go um, some of the other things that are noteworthy is that I also am running 10 ply tires for all you people going oh that's too much weight we are running a 10 ply tire on the rear, so it's a heavy uh, load range E-tire. Um, we do have tough truck springs in there, which adds some load capacity per the manufacturer of the springs. And then we'll get into the next part of this. Part two will be the actual hitch, and that should take the majority of this uh, squat out of there. So we're down to like, what, an inch and three quarter, inch and a uh, little over an inch of, yeah. you know, to get this thing back to the level yeah. that we got to come up with. So. Yep. Should be interesting, so stick around, we'll, uh, we'll get building on that very shortly. Hi, welcome back. Um, this is kind of the second part to Chris's towing upgrades. So in the prior video, you've seen we installed the airbag system. Uh, in, in this video, we're going to install uh, what you have here. It's, it's basically a... Um, commonly referred to as a weight distribution hitch setup for uh, most people who have travel trailers have these. Um, there's different styles, different varieties. I went with what's called a trunnion style 